Hi guys, sorry to interrupt your video. Just a quick plea, subscribe to my channel please. If you haven't done it already, subscribe. Tell your friends, subscribe. Thanks. Hello, right, accidents, as you can see. Topic of accidents. Um, obviously this is still Theory Test Pro. You know you get the score. All, drug, all learners with me get free access to it. Knock yourselves out. But let's go through it. Casualty isn't breathing normally and needs a CPR. At what rate should you press down and release the center of their chest? Right. There's two, there's a video I've got about CPR, child and adult. We both know the compressions there is between 100 and 120 per minute. Uh, or two times a second. So let's have a look for that. There it is, 120 times per minute. Easy. Make sure you watch that CPR. When are you allowed to use hazard warning lights? Okay, uh, hazards when you have temporarily causing obstructions or if you're on the motorway and traffic is suddenly stopping in front of you, that sort of thing. So, when stopped and temporarily obstructing traffic, that is true. When traveling darkness without headlights, no. Why are you doing that? When parked on double yellow lines to visit shop, no. When traveling slowly because you're lost, no. What should you do if you see a large box fall from a lorry onto the motorway? Right, well the lorry itself might not know it's there. You've got to warn other people. Best thing to do is use the emergency phone which is by the side of the road because by using that phone you can tell them exactly where you are and they know where to send somebody. So go to the next emergency telephone and report hazard. I love it. Uh, catch up with a lorry? No. Stop close to the box until... No, because you'll get wiped out by the traffic. Pull over to the hard shoulder and remove the box. Goodness, no. Do not go running into live traffic. You're asking to die. You're going through a long tunnel. What will warn you of congestion or an accident ahead? Hazard warning lines? Well, no. I mean, that's just paint telling don't overtake. Well, you shouldn't overtake. Other driver flashing their lights? No, you're in a tunnel. It's unlikely. Variable message signs? Yes. Let's have a look at one of those. There's one. There we go. Stuff like this. This is what they're saying. So it'll come up with things warning you telling you i mean this is telling you the left hand lane is shut and you've got a 40 mile an hour speed limit and the other three are running lanes that's what that's coming up with but you might well get something in a tunnel that says a lane is shut or accident or something uh, so it's that area with hatchet markings new no. you arrive at the scene of a motorcycle crash the rider is injured when should their helmet be removed well basically never unless a medical professional tells you, or they do it themselves, I suppose. But only when it is essential? Well, okay. Always straight away? No. Only when the motorcycles ask, I still keep it on because it's keeping me, you know, secure. I mean, always unless they're in shop? No, no, just only if it's essential. So don't remove a motorcycle's helmet unless it's essential. Remember, they may be suffering from shock. Don't give them anything to eat or drink, but do reassure them constantly and confidently, if I could read. You arrive at the scene of a motorcycle crash. No other vehicle is involved. The rider is unconscious and lying in the middle of the road. What's the first thing you should do at the scene? Uh, that video we got, Dr. ABC, remember? Danger, That's the first one, D. So move the rider out of the road. No, don't move people. Warn other traffic. There you go. Stop other danger first. We don't want to get wiped out. Clear the road of debris. No, give the rider reassurance. Yeah, that's later on. But the first thing you do is warn other traffic. The motorcycle is an extremely vulnerable position exposed to further danger from traffic. Approaching vehicles need advance warning in order to slow down and safely take avoiding action or stop. Don't put yourself or anyone else in risk. Use the hazard warning lights on your vehicle to alert other road users to the danger. You might even want to position your vehicle to make it very difficult for them to get around you. Depends on the road, doesn't it, really? Uh, but create a roadblock, I suppose. And then when the next car turns up, you get him to start warning other traffic and things like that. At an incident, it's important to look after any casualties. What should you do with them when the area is safe? Right, so move them away from vehicles. No, not unless there's another imminent danger like an explosion. Ask them how it happened. No. Give them something to eat. No, never, in case that's a choking hazard. And keep them where they are. Yeah, do that. And let the medical professionals sort it all out. The less we do with them, the less additional danger or problems could occur. 
When the area is safe and there's no danger from other traffic or fire, it's better not to move casualties. Moving them may cause further injury. Quite right. It's like they know what I'm going to say, isn't it? After a collision, someone is unconscious in their vehicle. When should you call the emergency services? Well, ASAP, frankly. Uh, only as a last resort. No. As well, there you go. ASAP. <laughs> after you've woken them up, after checking for broken bones. No, 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 no. Jump on that blower. Get somebody down there. Remember, three words is an app that you can have on your phone. Bloody fantastic. It locates uh, a two metre square anywhere in England. All emergency services uh, use it. So I'd get there, whip out your phone, find out what three words for your current location is, and then you can report it straight to the emergency services. Brilliant app. Get that. Right, you've broken down on a two-way road. You have a warning triangle. At least how far from your vehicle should you place the warning triangle? Right, now there's no way of working this out. You just need to know it. And it's 45 metres. So, uh, which is about... What's that? That's 11 car lengths. It's a rough guide. Most cars are about four car, uh, sorry, four meters long. Anyway, 45 meters. There's no way of <laughs> you can't work it out or anything like that. Uh, advanced warning triangles fall flat and don't get much room. Right. Use one to warn other road users if your vehicle is broken down or if there has been an accident. Place it at least 45 meters behind your vehicle or the incident, on the same side of the road or verge. Place it further back if the scene is hidden. For example, by a bend, hill, or dip in the road. Don't use warning triangles on motorways or dual carriageways, that is. Because if you've got traffic travelling at 70 miles an hour and somebody sideswipes it and then fires this nice piece of metal at people at 70 miles an hour, then that could um, get very messy. So we don't use warning triangles on fast roads. Your car breaks down on a level crossing. Mm, bad times. What's the first thing you should do? Right. Well, it's a level crossing. Let's see. Tell drivers behind what's happened. No, don't have a chat. Leave your vehicle and get everyone clear. That's brilliant. It's a level crossing, isn't it? Uh, there we go. Level crossing. Trains coming through. Imminent source of death coming. So therefore, don't stay on it. Uh, walk down the track to the signal. No, stay in your car until you're told to move. By whom? Hmm? What you're supposed to do, if you break down, there's normally a telephone near the level crossing where you can control, I don't know where it is in these pictures, but there's, uh, the, yeah, there you go, telephone. So there's a telephone there that you can use to phone this box here, wherever it is on the line, and he would warn the train to start slowing down. Uh, but get out, find the telephone, warn somebody. If they then instruct you that uh, they've warned the train, now trying push the car clear of the crossing then you can do it but the first thing you do if you get stuck is get out get everyone out of the vehicle you can always buy another car can't you right what should you do if a tire bursts while you're driving right okay so you've got a tire burst this means you have an instant lack of grip on one corner of your car therefore do not do anything suddenly we've already mentioned this before in previous videos uh, if you suddenly ask a tire to do something when it hasn't got any grip, it will skid or lose control. Lock up, lose control. So, uh, pull on the parking brake. No, because you might well lose control and skid. Brake as quick as possible. No, because again, you're suddenly doing something. Pull up slowly at the side of the road. Yes, just take your foot off the accelerator. Just cruise in, maintaining a good grip on the steering wheel and just park up. All right. Uh, continue at normal speed. God, no. You've only got three tires. Sounds like a mare, doesn't it? What should you do if your vehicle has a puncture on a motorway? Right. Well, loads of people die on motorways every year uh, because they are exposed to, to fast moving traffic. So the best thing to do is get out of the firing line, ask for help, somebody will turn up and they might even just take you off the motorway to then change your tyre for you. But don't, for God's sake, try and change a tyre by the side of the road. So drive slowly to the next service area to get assistance. Well, only if it's there. I mean, I wouldn't drive for 20 miles to the next service centre with only three wheels on my car. Pull up on the hard shoulder of, or an in emergency refuge area. Change the wheel as quickly as possible. No. Pull up on the hard shoulder or an emergency refuge area and call for assistance. Yes. Switch on your hazard warning lights and stop in your lane. Goodness, no. This is why um, 
oh what are they called smart motorways recently have been uh they've declared oh let's say wife's exploding <coughs> it's all right bless you didn't work no anyway <laughs> um smart motorways they've recently said that they're going to stop building them because if you have a live running lane and somebody breaks down in them then you could well have a lorry smashing into the back of you and people die the number of people that die on smart motorways versus a normal motorway is m much greater so I think they've declared that they're not going to make them anymore. I think they're going to finish the ones they were starting on, but they're not going to make more. Um, which is your switch on your hazard warning light, stop in your lane. Yeah, only on a smart motorway. But try to get out the firing line, basically. Next. Your vehicle is stalled in the middle of a level crossing. What should you do if the warning bell starts to ring while you're trying to restart the engine? Get out! If the if the bell's ringing, there's a train coming. Uh, get out, clear the crossing, run down the track. No, carry on trying to restart the engine. No, push the vehicle, clear the crossing. Uh, no, get out. If it's going ding 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 ding, there's a train coming. Get out of the car. What should you do before driving into a tunnel? Well, let's have a look. Switch off your radio. Well, they might even have a sign that tells you that there's a um, frequency regarding the tunnel sometimes they will um, put out a message saying if there's any trouble in the tunnel take off your sunglasses well that's logical if you're coming into a tunnel and you're wearing sunglasses to take them off close your sunroof why uh, switch on your windscreen wipers well it's not gonna rain in a tunnel is it so um that makes more sense Correct. If you're wearing sunglasses, you should remove them before driving into a tunnel. If you don't, your vision will be restricted, even in tunnels that appear to be well lit. Well, what a shocker. Which lights should you use when you're driving in a tunnel? Okay, uh, side lights, front spot lights, dipped headlights, rear fog lights. Well, it's not foggy. Spotlights? No, they would normally blind everybody. Dipped headlights is the answer. We know this from previous and uh, side lights they're only little lights that go around we're going in a tunnel so you want lights spilled onto the floor don't you so dipped headlights are the answer to that um, next what should you do to reduce the risk of your vehicle catching fire mm. well they don't normally catch fire so keep water levels above maximum no you're just slosh water everywhere check out any strong smells of fuel well that makes sense if there's a strong smell of fuel you are spraying petrol or diesel all over the place and that is a massive fire hazard check that out avoid driving with a full tank of fuel no I mean the cars are designed to drive with a full tank of fuel it's the smell of fuel that you want to worry about use fuel additives well that's just to make your engine run better so out of all of that check out any strong smell of fuel um, what's this yeah, the fuel in your vehicle can be dangerous fire hazard. Yes, if you smell fuel, check out where it's coming from. Never use a naked flame near the vehicle if you can smell fuel. Smoke when refueling your vehicle. Right, well that's perfectly written that was. Look, don't smoke, it's fuel. 